Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And, um, you know, we always say on this program that um, when we get the calls from people who, who say their girlfriend hates our show or the uh, wife gets upset because it's on in the car, I always say that's how we know we're doing it right. Because our show is aimed at guys. It's a show by guys, for guys, about guys. Sure, anybody with the radio can tune in, and uh, a 35% of our audience is women. That's fine. Happy to have you. This way you can find out how men think. You may not like it. And you can hear by the women who call in, many of them don't. But um, I think that's a good thing. This world strives to be female friendly. Everything has to appeal to women. They take everything that used to be for men. It has to be female friendly. The NFL has to be female friendly. Steakhouses have to be female friendly. Hockey. They have to have the kiss cam and people proposing to each other at the hockey game to keep chicks interested in the game. To get chicks to come out. Yeah, in Seattle you can't curse or you can't yell at the baseball game. Oh my God. You want to have a family-friendly experience at the ballpark? It's the way they are. Bottom line, though, is that uh, we've never worried about that. And we know that our show causes you to bicker with your girlfriend or your wife. It does. And ladies, I know some of you out there right now are steaming mad just because you're hearing the sound of my voice. And I know many of you have uh, begun to argue, fight, or stop talking to the man you're with. Because uh, you don't think it's right that this show is on. Don't think it's right that I'm here. So every once in a while, we try to take the temperature of the audience and find out if we're doing it right. And I know that uh, there are some of you out there right now who've had this experience, right? Like uh, maybe you share a car, maybe one of the cars in the shop. Okay, so you know you uh, start the car, and uh, there is my show coming out of the speakers, a show you would not normally listen to, right, ladies? And you're hearing the sound of my voice, and you're just getting pissed, and you can't figure out why your boyfriend or your husband listens to this crap. Guys, you've come home and you've quoted something you heard on the air or you mentioned what a caller had said or something somebody had done on the program. And suddenly you get this blank stare, you get the screaming and yelling. You know what I'm talking about. I'll bet some of you have had physical confrontations over the show. Some of you just can't hold back. Some of you have actually gone at each other's throats. I'm sure that's true. So in this hour, I want to talk to people who have specifically had fights, arguments, screaming matches, physical altercations, because you tune in. Do you want to know how many people have sent me their divorce papers? This is not once. You know how many people have sent me their divorce papers? And the Tom Liga show was cited in the divorce papers as a cause for a divorce? That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So if you have ever had an argument about this show with the person who supposedly loves you, or the person you're dating, an argument, a screaming match, some kind of physical confrontation, broke up over it, got divorced over it, that's how we know we're doing it right. Call me and tell me about it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I love what you're doing for our young men of America. Yes, it's a public service, as you know. Well, absolutely. 
The Tom Likas Show. Thank you. So uh, my chick says, you're the root of all of our problems. I'm the root? You are the root. If, I, if we have a problem, you're the cause. Come home with a crazy idea, you're the cause. So anyways, every time we get in the truck, you're on. She freaks out. Says, I'm not going to ride with you. This and that, rambling on. She threatened to get out, call a friend. I was like, check it out, man. I said, if you can't handle it, then, you know, maybe maybe we shouldn't be together if this is the cause because, you know, we can't have this. How'd she react to that? She just said, well, whatever. So she got out that time and called a friend and whatnot. Come back. Well, you're still on the radio, dude, and I'm still with her. So she grew to love it. You know what I mean? She really had no choice. No choice. That's right. Because you got balls. Thank you. That's it, Tom. Take me out with a bong hit. Here you go, Sean. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Christie in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Last night you were talking about women who uh, get pregnant or or don't get abortions, and, or no, no, it was about um, men who wanted vasectomies and they got pregnant. A woman got pregnant, and the man had a vasectomy. And yesterday. Even though my boyfriend and I had talked about having kids, he decided yesterday he wanted a vasectomy while we were, you know, even though we had decided to have kids. I didn't fight with him because I know better, but it it hurt my feelings. Why did it hurt your feelings? Well, because he decided, you know, he told me a while ago that he wanted to have kids with me. And then all of a sudden, just because of a topic that you had with some other chick, you know, who's rotten and terrible. Changed his mind. So, uh, did he schedule an appointment? Is he having it? No, well, I don't know. He's 25. I doubt it, but maybe. And then what happens? Well, it takes two people to have kids, so I guess we won't be having kids. But will you still be with him? Absolutely. I love him. Really? Yeah. Wow. He always, I've always told him that if I were to get pregnant and we both weren't ready, that I'd have an abortion. And he always told me that he trusted me. That we, that you know, that would, that would happen. But then he just changed his mind based on a topic that you had. All of a sudden, women weren't trustworthy. The topic I had was about uh, guys who have vasectomies. Should they tell their girlfriends about it or the women they're dating? And I said no. Oh. Well, they didn't hear that hour. He was just telling me about it. Well, that's what we were talking about, so you know. Oh. So he didn't do what I said to do, because if he was doing what I said to do, he'd have had the vasectomy, and you wouldn't know about it. Well, you're right, because he told me. Right. <laughs> so maybe you shouldn't be so angry. Well, no. I At least he told you. Not to fight, but I just kind of, you know, hurt my feelings, because he told me he wanted to have kids with me. Uh-huh. He told me he trusted me to have an abortion if if we ended up getting pregnant. Mm-hmm. By the way, having nothing to do with trust, I wouldn't uh, count on any woman doing that. Because I know when women get pregnant, their hormones go nuts, and then they start making uh, decisions based on their hormones. Yeah, he said that to me, too, yesterday. Well, that, that I've seen <laughs> firsthand, dear. Yeah. All right, Tom, take me out. Here you go, Christy. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Adrian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Doing okay, Adrian. Good, good. Um, so basically, my girlfriend just hates the sound of your voice and everything about any topic that you've ever had on your station. We get in the car, and she just as soon as she hears your voice, she tenses up and she tries to change the station. She hates it. That's how we know we're doing it right. <laughs> right, right. I, I just don't think that she agrees with some of the topics that you have to to bring up. Even now, I tell her this is the way that the majority of the male population thinks. Yeah, she has a problem with that. Yeah, yeah. Or, or she tries to tell herself that you're not one of them. Right, right. Well, she tries to tell me that I'm not one of them. <laughs> and I just got to be okay, you know, just... 
just because uh, Tom has his own point of view here doesn't mean that he's lying to you. So you haven't exactly admitted that you're one of those guys. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, we have an open relationship. She knows, you know, I'm a flirt, you know, and I'm a guy. I, I, I do what I like to do, and she doesn't like it most of the time, but she puts up with me. And, you know, I've, I've definitely admitted to her that I am one of those guys. Uh -huh. She doesn't like that, but hearing it come from another male figure doesn't exactly uh, rub her the right way. I'll bet it doesn't. Mm-mm. Well, I say no matter which way you're rubbing, as long as you're rubbing. <laughs> which is why she hasn't left me yet. <laughs> Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOMS. I tell them our show has caused problems in your relationship. Yelling, screaming, fighting. Kevin, hello. Tom. Yes. Hey, glad to have you in Phoenix, man. First time, long time. I was in Southern California for a couple of years and uh, tuned in there. And, man, it, I was lost with Dahlia, but I'm so glad you're here. Me too. Great. you got to come out here sometime, man. I think we're going to be there in April. Fantastic. We'll be, we'll be announcing a date soon. I think it's April. Great. I'll be there. Well, hey, uh, I wanted to let you know that um, you've caused me some problems once or twice, uh, you know, in addition to saving my butt several times. But yeah. uh, the time in particular, I'm laid up in bed, you know, at home, sick as a dog. The girlfriend hops in the car to go to Walgreens to pick up my prescription. And she calls me and says, oh, you're listening to that Tom Likas guy. I said, well, it's Tom Likas, but, yeah, I listen all the time. And it turned into probably a 45-minute conversation while she's waiting for the pharmacist to fill my prescription when I'm sick in bed, man. Wow. It's awful. Wow. Yeah, I mean, she's over it now. She knows I listen, and, you know, I mean, she's not real happy about it. But, you know, it's not going to stop what I do, so. I imagine it's not. No way, man. You're the father. I follow you everywhere, buddy. Thank you for that, Kevin. I appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Liz on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Liz. I am calling because my boyfriend is stupid and he doesn't agree with anything you say. And we get in screaming fights frequently about you. So your boyfriend doesn't agree with what I say, but you do. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, uh... I had a very good ex-boyfriend's uncle who trained me to listen to you many years ago. Very nice. So how long have you been listening? How old were you when you started? I was 17 when I first started listening to you. Love that. And, yeah. So, so what, is your, is your boyfriend a pussy? A little bit. He, uh, his dad traveled a lot when he was in high school, and so he got a little bit too much female influence. Oh, boy. Man, oh, man. What a shame. Yeah, yeah, he is definitely a pussy. When we got in the argument about the Roe vs. Wade for men, he thought it was ridiculous that men should be able to opt out, and I told him he was stupid, he was going to get stuck with child support for something that wasn't his, and he told me that that doesn't happen. Oh, please! <laughs> huge screaming fit. I have this cousin that's only my cousin because my uncle was the most well-to-do man that this woman slept with that month and he spent years trying to fight it and he spent he did 17 and a half years of birth control until she got knocked up or not birth control but child support yeah uh-huh so my boyfriend has just reported and he doesn't listen to you and so we'll scream for hours when he doesn't listen to you but wow amazing stuff liz well, i'm glad to hear you were a supporter yes yes you need some women out here and you know getting more men to listen to you and get less pussified Yes, I do. Kelly, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. How you doing, man? Doing okay, son. Hey, all right. Yeah, man. Listening to you is the best thing that ever happened to me. I, uh, about uh, three years ago, it, uh, I ended up having the DTB, man. I, just, I, I was one of those pussies for about 11 years. So how did this go down, finally? Man, I tell you what, I started listening to you and come home one afternoon and just started started to bring up a conversation about women and being attention whores, man. And I tell you what, it went downhill from there. Wow. It, <laughs> it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't seven months later, man. It was done. And uh, did she blame me for the divorce? Uh, well, yeah, and she was mostly me, but yeah, you were in there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Kelly, the uh, all-important question, are you now getting more ass than a toilet seat? Absolutely. 
Love that. Absolutely, man. But I tell you what, I, I just recently remarried, but I tell you what, the wife I got, man, A number one. A number one, man. She, that, that thing I got before the marriage, I get after the marriage. Man, she takes care of me. She, you know, she doesn't ask me to do anything I don't need to do, and, uh, and she respects me, man. I tell you what, it's great. And do you ever hear from the ex? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Why? Well, we're, we're tied, man. I got a son. Oh, okay. And, uh, I got the son, and uh, I'm going to keep him. I don't want him being raised by that man. I want him raised the right way. I understand. Hopefully, they've got a radio tuned to our station over there. Hey, we're, hey I can only hope, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Hey, he takes me out with an orgasm and a bong, yeah, baby. Here you go, Kelly. Oh, oh God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Debbie, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Great. Love your show. Thank I get you. a kick out of it because I know your profile fits so many women that I do know and guys that just put up with the crap constantly. But I got a question. Recently, have you had anything out about how housework and things inside the house are a woman's duty and things outside the house are a man's duty because... In the eight years I've been married to my husband, we've always shared duties, and all of a sudden we are not talking over this, that he doesn't want to help me with anything around the house anymore. We both got full-time jobs, and I just figured, because you are out there every day, he listens to you religiously, and we're at different times, and I'm just wondering, have you had something recently on that? Because we ain't talking over over this current topic. Well, I haven't said it recently, but uh, we have discussed on the air the fact that marriages do appear to be happier, in most cases, with traditional gender roles. Even with the full-time, both work and full-time, you have a child, and unfortunately, you know... Well, both work and full-time would not be traditional gender roles to start with. Right. So... What do you recommend, I guess, because I know you're going to give more of a man's version, but I guess is that something that you agree with? Well, that? if you want to make your man happy, you got to look at the man's point of view. Oh, come on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> looking at it from your point of view makes you happy, but probably not him. But sometimes you got to compromise. Dear, I've always said on this program, the more you have to compromise, the more likely it is you marry the wrong person. If everything else is good... And the things you're fighting about is something so minuscule as housework versus... It's not minuscule, dear. If the two of you aren't talking, this is not minuscule. It's war. Well, right now it's war. Well, no, it's, so it's not minuscule. But, you know, you, you allow the guy to go golfing anytime he wants, and he works with me with my hobbies and my horses. You know, you got to compromise all the time. Everything's going good, and this is the breaking straw, I guess. Over housework, so well, you got to have a little bit of compromise. Don't Bob, you? That, wouldn't he prefer that you be home with the kid more? No, no, because at my job, I I make more than he does. Unfortunately, he's in construction and being a non-union state, it's just not supported. But you know, I'm unfortunately right now I'm making more money than him, mm -hmm. and you know, you. So does that mean he's home more than you are? Hours wise, yeah, because I got to put a little bit more time in than he does. And with our time, we share the no. baby duties. You know, I'm dropping off in the morning, and he drops off in the afternoon. So and he's still doing time. that. Yeah, yeah, everything's still split because of how our hours are, and we've always been this way. And then all of a sudden, recently, like I said, in the eight years we've been together, this has never been mentioned. All of a sudden, no, it's your household duties are a reflection on the woman. And my outside work is a reflection on the man, and you're responsible for the house, and I'm responsible for the outside. Well, don't assume it's me, dear. It could also be some religious organization like Promise Keepers or something like that that he's oh, involved no. with. No, he's not involved in any of that. Well, I'm just curious, because like I said, I miss... Well, I mean, for me, I, I think the happiest relationships, like it or not, are the ones with traditional gender roles, which includes that he be doing most of the outside work and you be at home with the kid. Well, I threw it at him. You know, if he wants to do the outside work, then I want my truck maintenance, you know, properly, getting the oil changes, which I normally do on both vehicles. And I want my car waxed and, you know, cleaned every week. Then I can work this out. There's always a compromise, but he didn't like that idea either. Well, all right. So uh, he probably, you know, at least uh, he misinterpreted what I said, or maybe he didn't get it from me at all. 
Well, that's clearly not what I said. But thank you. 1-800-5... I'm happy to have credit for breaking up uh, your relationship or making it difficult. 1-800-5800-JOM. It's Carissa on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. I'm Hi. Carissa in Phoenix. Hi, Carissa. Hi. I just wanted to tell you, um, I my ex-boyfriend, he uh, carried your show on his radio station. And it was K KTHO AM 590 in Lake Tahoe. Yes. And he w uh, wussed out. He said he wasn't getting any advertisers, blah, blah, blah. And so he canceled your show off the station, and that caused oh. us pretty much, uh, that ultimately ended it. What ultimately ended it is he went out of business anyways, and so I dumped him because he was broke. But, yeah, it all started with him and a huge fight. It all started with him uh, dumping your show. Now, was it his radio station? Yeah, it was his radio So it went out of business? He went out of business. He is no longer the owner. Wow. Yeah, we even went to one of your shows where you had all the topless chicks and everything. Yeah. And it was like a Harris. And we had a blast. I have a picture with you, and so does he. Oh, I was that in Reno? You. We did that in uh, Reno once. Oh, yeah, it was in Reno to El Dorado. That's right. Yeah. Yep, that's right. And so it was so long ago. And, and um, yeah, so we ultimately ended because of that. Well, what? I mean, what a puss, huh? Uh, uh, unbelievable. I knew he got canceled, but no one ever told me the story. And yeah, clearly, okay. if the station went out of business or he's no longer the owner, uh, clearly his problem was he didn't know how to sell advertising time. He didn't. Because... Period. Amen. That was exactly what it was. Right. He had no idea how to do it. And he was a micromanager, blah, blah, blah. And he also didn't know how to take care of his woman. So he was like, oh, really? close to 50, and I was like 22, blonde, uh, hot, and he couldn't even keep me around, and he couldn't keep his business either. So See, I should have come to town and done a little lister party there. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. I'd have gotten the job done right there. I know. In fact, I wanted to jump your bones right there, but he was there, so I couldn't. I would have sealed that affiliation agreement immediately. <laughs> I'm sure you would have. Well, thank you for listening, and we love you in Phoenix. Thank you, Carissa. Bye. Appreciate the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. We'll break it down for you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. You have that same disease that most women have, okay? Mm -hmm. You have selective hearing. I probably do. I like to hear what I want to hear. I understand that. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Los Angeles. Has our show caused arguments, fights, physical altercations in your home? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Mark has been on our show not just on the phone, he's been in person before, but he kind of fits in this hour. Hi, Mark. Hi, Tom. Now, for people who have not heard you before, Mark, tell us what happened with you. Oh, gosh. Uh, I think I was the first one that ever, I mean, I know other people have claimed that, uh, you know, was put in their divorce decree, but I actually proved that it was put in my divorce decree that the children not be allowed to listen to your program. Ma yeah, Mark actually brought the divorce papers down to a listener party we did, and we showed them on stage. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That's amazing. So now, have you? Know, the funny thing is, is that uh, the crowd, as I was leaving, they they nicknamed me the divorce guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know if your kids uh, have heard the Tom Likas show since then? Uh, well, not I, not while I'm around. Um, but uh, I, you know, I I'm. Schooling my son on, you know, the likings of Tom Likas' teachings, you know, on my own without actually having him listen to the program. There we go. Excellent. But, but uh, yeah, that was actually a big, big fight of ours. Anytime, you know, she would get in my truck and I'd have it on, she would just, I mean, it was like you you just shot her up with a nuclear weapon. I mean, she would just, she would just go off. That guy's a you know, a hole and this and that, and she'd just go on and on. And I'm like, you know what? If she hates him that much, <laughs> time to DTV. That's right. Uh, never since you did DTV, how's it going? Oh my God, my life. It's actually been about a year now since uh, yeah. since the separation. It's still not even final yet. You know how those divorces go. But uh, my life has completely taken a 180. Business is awesome. Uh, getting more ass than a toilet seat. Uh -huh. uh, real smoking high young girls. I mean, you're talking about, you know, 20 years my my junior. You know what I mean? That's they're what just, you get. They're like in their 20s, late mid-20s. You know, I had one 18. You know, I've, I, I just they're just 
just beautiful girls and just, you know, whatever I want. And I've got that attitude that, you know, this is what I got and I'm making a lot of money. You want what I got, take it or leave it. And, and, and how's your ex doing? Uh, funny you said that. She, uh, I gave her the house, the business, everything in the house. Uh, she filed bankruptcy. The house is in foreclosure. The car's being repossessed, and her business is going under. Maybe you can buy the house at a percentage of what it was worth. <laughs> Too many bad memories over there. <laughs> I'd have the kegerator rolled in, and I'd be ready to rock. No, nah, too many bad memories over there. I'll pass on that. Well, I'm living alone. I got the kegerator. I got the plasma screen. Oh, yeah. I'm living, I'm living alone. I've got... Uh, I don't have the kegerator because I don't drink quite that much beer, but I, I did buy myself an individual refrigerator that does hold... Uh, just has nothing but beer in it. I have all different types of beer in there. Yeah. Imports, uh, yeah. you know, just everything in there because okay. I have friends that come over and, you know, we all just have fun. It's a lot more fun now, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Mark. Every time I talk to you, I'm just beaming with pride. Yeah, it's, uh, you know what? I mean, I finally got my nads back, and, um, you know, it just it feels good. You know, I mean, and, and it's just, it's very interesting because if I told you, I mean, I don't want to elaborate too much, but if I told you how good business was right now, you would, you would just be amazed in less than a, barely a year. Well, it all it, it all comes together, Mark. You know, when you're miserable in a relationship or a marriage, it affects everything. It drags everything into the quicksand. Yeah, well, she was holding me back. I mean, she was restricting everything I did. I mean, I, I mean, I no business meetings at night, no meeting clients at late, no early morning this, no, you know, calling at all hours, you know, to keep business going you know if i wanted to work late you know on the computer or something that was always a problem and it's just i mean all those things they just add up and you know business you know what you have to do to make business work and and i just i have a knack at it and i'm fortunate that way and it's just amazing i mean it's just amazing you know maybe one day we'll sit down and smoke a cigar and and we could just really uh you know not hold back and, and i could tell you all the great details it's just it's really terrific. You know, my life now, Tom, and I really, I have to give you a, a debt of gratitude. You've really opened my eyes to, to let me see what was out there and what was really available. And, and I mean, and I would have, you know, if I'd have stayed there, I'd have been drug into bankruptcy. You know, I'd be getting kicked out of my, I mean, she told me just two days ago that she's got to move in. Uh, she's got to move out of the house. And I'm, you know, here I am, all comfortable in my nice little place. And, you know, it's just... <laughs> Uh, she didn't ask you for help yet, did she? No, no. She asked me for money every t every time I talk to her. What are you talking about? <laughs> and I always tell her, oh, I don't have any money. And, yeah. you know. Well, besides, you know, I, you know, all you owe her is child support, right? Yeah, that's all I get. Well, I, you know how much I pay for child support. Do you remember? No, tell us. I told you it's $100 a month. Yeah, it was something ridiculous. I didn't just did $100 a month. I Two love kids. it. Two kids. Love it. <laughs> well, it's because I gave her the house and the business and everything. So, uh, no spousal, and uh, and that was after uh, almost seventeen years of uh, being with her. Very good so work. No, no spousal at all. Very good. And how much did you have? A lot of equity in that house. About a hundred, about a hundred. But the business was making ten, ten, eleven thousand a month. So well, you can always you know. create a new business that you can oh, do. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, I mean. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, because biz money's easy to make, you know, it really is. If you know how to make it, it's it's really a very easy thing to make. But um, you just have to, you know, be dedicated and, and want to do it. And, uh, right. you know, I I was so apprehensive about, you know, I was so beaten down by by her for over, uh, God, all those years. She sucked the life out of you. Oh, my God. She literally sucked the life out of me. And, and I was just, I mean, I was just this. I've, I've, now I've, you I've, see how women are dream killers. Oh my God, Tom! You say that, and you—you you don't even. I mean, I don't even think your listeners realize the impact of just that one sentence. That women are dream killers. They are just complete dream killers. I mean, oh my God! I, I mean, look yeah. what happened. And I kept telling her about how to run business. No, let's do it like this. No, you don't know what the f you're talking about. I said, okay, we'll see. You know, and 
it's just you know, I mean, it's uh, just amazing. It's just, I, I mean, I, I, I honestly, Tom, I have to step back and I have to look at myself and, from an outsider's perspective and just look at what I've done. And, and you know what, Tom? I'm actually amazed at myself. I look back and I go, oh, my God, just look what I've done. Look what I've created in, in a year. Imagine 10. Oh, Mark, I am so proud of you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If you had sex with me because I said I was a doctor, by the time you find out I'm not a doctor, guess what? I had sex with you. I got what I wanted. Get Next right. victim. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Gary. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Doing okay. Hey, um, that guy, Mark, that you were just talking to? Yes. That guy's my hero, man. Isn't that an amazing story? That is something else, dude. Look, I was married for 23 years, and I just went through a divorce, and I'm living in an apartment. My ex got all the money, and, you know, if I had to do it all over again... I would have gave her the house. I was emotionally attached to it, the work that I had done there and all that. But I would have just gave her the house and got her out of my hair and got her gone. She can have the equity and everything else. Let's just start over, you know? That guy did wonderful. And he's doing even better now. Oh, yeah. You know, you know uh, I've got what's called a Smith Osler. I don't know if you've have you ever heard of that. No. That's a clause where if if I work more... She gets more. Oh, boy. Dude, I, you know, I work offshore. I run tugboats, and I go away for weeks at a time. And sometimes I can go away for, you know, two months. And if I work two months straight, then she gets anything, a percentage of anything extra that I make. And, and what if you make nothing for a month? Um, well, then I owe her. So you have to. So your business is one of those businesses like certain construction jobs. Yeah, exactly. Feast or famine. One month you make twice as much. Another month you make nothing. Exactly. But in months where you make twice as much, she gets twice as much. In months where you make nothing, she still gets something. That's exactly right. That's a, after twenty-three years of marriage. I've got to pay her the vagina money for life now. Oh. And I've got to pay. Um, for another, my daughter will be 18 here next year, but until then, I'm paying 2200 a month in child support. Now, yeah, oh. I know, I know it's a pain, and I hate it too. <laughs> Was it worth it though? Was it? Is the divorce worth it? To get out? Yes. I feel like I've had two large suitcases lifted off my shoulders. Yeah, even though you had to pay, you know what they say. I always love to repeat this old expression. You know, you know why divorce costs so much. Because it's worth because it. Because it's worth it. And, and you, you know, um, I, I really, I'm having a hard time out there, you know, Tom, because after being married for so long, it's like uh, I don't know how to go out and pick up women, and it's not as easy as it used to be. I'm, you know, I'm about 30 pounds heavier than I was when we got married, and it's really tough, you know, for me. And I'm, I'm trying and trying, but I think, you know, the, the divorce has been over for almost two and a half years now starting to come out of this thing a little bit and, uh, you know, get a little bit of that wildness back. And if I drank, it would help, I think, but I don't drink. Well, hit that treadmill a little more. Hit the weight room a little bit. You yeah. don't even have to do a lot. Yeah, I know. This is true. This is true, man. You can do it. All righty. Anyway, I listen to you guys, you know, whenever I can. And, and I, my, my son listens to you. I have my 12-year-old son with me all the time, Excellent. and he thinks you're great. Perfect. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to raise him right, man. Sounds good to me, Gary. I'm proud of you. Thank you for that. Real quickly now, Sarah, I'm going to let you have the last word this hour. Oh, yes. Um, I just wanted to call, listening to the guy who was just on, talking about his wife and getting divorced with her, um, and, and with the money, and, and listening to you about an hour ago, talking about uh, money and women just want money. Uh, my husband's, you know, having a real hard time with work and uh, not making that much money and trying to decide if he needs to go back to the old job to make the money or stay with this job to create the future. And I just want, seriously, anybody, any woman who's married to a guy during a struggle, 
he's not going to get better if you call him a loser. He's not going to get better if you tell him he's worthless. He's not going to get better. I don't think they care if he gets any better. They just want out. It's the Tom Likas Show.